Good morning. Uh, here are the announcements for the week following Sunday, January 29th. Our annual congregational meeting is today following worship. Please stay, for this is an important meeting as we need at least 50 members to attend and vote. Lunch and child care will be provided. And my wife made cookies starting at 5 this morning. The Men's Donut Hole Gang is starting a new video Bible study about places the Apostle Paul journeyed. The journey begins Saturday, February 4th at 8 a.m. Uh, see this week's newsletter for more information. We will once again be having a fat Sunday pancake and porky breakfast on February 19th. There, are, there is a board in the narthex, so please sign up to help and or donate a ticket donation star for this is a fun event. Upcoming speaker, uh, an upcoming speaker will be hosting, or we will be hosting a speaker on Wednesday, February 1st at 6.30 p.m. who will be able to talk about the Islamic community with our confirmation class, but all are welcome. If you'd like more information or have questions, contact the church office and have a great week. Thanks, Chris. Good morning. It's good to see all of you today. For those who are gathering online, you're staying warm in your homes. Good for you. Delighted that you can be with us today as well. Um, as Chris said, um, we do need a quorum of 50, but we're not going to stop at 50. So if there are 51 or more, please come to the meeting. It'll be great. Uh, we give thanks for you. We give thanks for the ministry that we've shared in the last year. We look forward to what this year offers in our way of serving our community and serving God in all that we do. Uh, we give thanks for that. We'll hear more about that through the uh, Sermon on the Mount today in our Matthew text. Uh, also about um, how do we serve others and who are the others and who are the blessed. So getting you, getting you primed already for our message today. It's, again, great to see everyone who is gathered here today, and uh, we're missing Francisco today. He unfortunately had car troubles in Door County, so if anybody wants to go to Door County and help him, <laughs> he's hoping to get back at some point today, but uh, we wish God's blessings to him, and thank you, Joy, for stepping in this morning as you woke up and found out that you were on. That happens, and that's ministry, and I appreciate your gifts and talents and everyone else who is stepping up to help out as well, so good to see you. That's our announcements this morning. Why don't we take a deep breath to get ready for our time of worship to meet God and to see how God is directing us. Oh, there we go. As you're able, let us stand for the invocation. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the Word made flesh, our life, and our salvation. Amen. We sing our gathering song, Rejoice, ye pure in heart.
Together, let us share in the prayer of the day. Holy God, you confound the world's wisdom in giving your kingdom to the lowly and the pure in heart. Give us such a hunger and thirst for justice and perseverance in striving for peace that in our words and deeds, the world may see the life of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Congregation may be seated. It is time for the children's message, so we invite the children to come on down. <laughs> yeah, here we are once again. Come on down. Woohoo! I love it. I love it. Oh, hi, Gigi. Oh, my goodness. All right. How's everyone doing today? All right. Hey, that was a pretty good response for being such a brisk day out there. It's good to see all of you. Well, I have some pictures with me, and I want you to help me look at these pictures and tell me, well, what's wrong with the, the first one at least? What's wrong with this first picture? Uh, yeah, it's a car. What's wrong with it? it? It's flipped over. That's not good, is it? We hope everybody's okay who's in that car, right? It's flipped over. It should be on its wheels, and it's not. We might even say that this car is... This one's broken. It's broken, yeah. That wasn't what I was going to say, but we'll get to that. All right. Uh, let's see. What's going on in this picture? Ooh, that was a quick hand. What, what's going on? There's technically nothing wrong with it. It's oh. just how the mechanics built it. Oh. Because they come rides up the roller coasters like a loop. Ah, okay. So the roller coaster, there's nothing wrong with it. But it's upside down, isn't it? Yeah, it's upside down. So it was built to be that way. Um, would you be okay if it stopped right here like this? No. Um, a quick no. Uh, I'm thinking no. <laughs> uh, no, I, I, I will say I would not like it. If I knew that it was going to take off, though, in about two seconds, it would be okay. But, mm, yeah, no, that wouldn't be good for me. <gasps> okay. Anybody? What's going on here? What's going on here? Yeah. I sense a theme going on here, right? This is a chickadee, and it is upside down on this branch. How many of you look at birds and you wish that you could be upside down like them and climb trees like how they do with their claws? Except for, um, except for a bat. Except for a bat. Hey, that's a good one. I didn't think of that one. This is why we do these. We learn. We learn from our children's messages. And how about this one? You sense the theme, right? This child is on the monkey bars and they are upside down. Well, no. See, what if I did this? Oh, yeah, th this is the top. This is the way it should be. They're upside down. How many of you like to hang upside down on the monkey bars? Yeah? That's kind of fun to do. How long can you do it for? For a long while. I knew you'd say that. How did I know that? <laughs> oh, yeah, I wouldn't want to do it in winter right now because it's freezing cold. You're right. But upside down, so you sense the theme that being upside down is going to happen today. Jesus is going to share some words with the crowds of people. Now look at all the people who are here in church. There's a lot of people here. There were even more people who came to see Jesus. And Jesus went up a mountain and Jesus sat down. Whenever you hear of Jesus going up a mountain, pay attention. And when he's going to sit down to teach, pay more attention. Something important is going on, and Jesus is going to share with the people who are gathered that the way that we think and live our lives is not correct, so he turns everything upside down. Jesus is going to talk about the people who are blessed. Who's blessed? Yeah, you're blessed. That's good. I'm blessed. Thank you. Oh, everybody's blessed. Yeah. 
in the end every yeah very good all right see you're going already till the end we don't even need a sermon today do we uh, wow all right even my wife's getting into this i like it she's giving an amen i haven't heard an amen in church in a while so this is good <laughs> Jesus is going to remind us, because sometimes we forget who's blessed. So Jesus is reminding those who are gathered that the meek and the poor in spirit, those who are mourning, the merciful, the ones who hunger and thirst for righteousness to be like God and to share God's good news, and many others. And so Jesus is going to share with them. It's going to turn everybody kind of upside down because they were thinking only about themselves or maybe about their little community, but Jesus is going to share it for everybody. So sometimes we don't really always get it right. Sometimes we have to turn it upside down in order to understand. There you go. See, you're, you're doing it. So why don't we pray? Let's wave our right hand and our left hand and bring it together. Let us pray. Dear God, thank you for Jesus and his teaching and his message that is upside down. It reminds us that he loves everyone. And we are to do that too. And we are to do that too. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thanks, everyone. You can head back to your seats. I appreciate your help and your energy today. That was wonderful. Around the time 53 CE, about a quarter century after the crucifixion and resurrection of Jesus, the early Christians of Corinth, of Corinth were divided about who's more superior. The Apostle Paul, the Apostle, a man named Apollos, um, the Apostle Peter, and some even said they themselves were superior because they were, served, they served, they were servants in Christ. And in response, the Apostle Paul wrote this letter. The first reading comes from the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 1, verses 18 to 31. <clears throat> For the message about the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and the discernment of the discerning I will thwart. Where is the one who is wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since the wisdom of God, the world did not know God through wisdom. God decided through the foolishness of our proclamations to save those who believe. For Jews demand signs and Greeks desire wisdom. But we proclaim Christ is Christ crucified, a stumbling block to the Jews and foolishness to the Gentiles. But those who are called both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power, of, the power of God and the wisdom of God. For God's foolishness is wiser than human wisdom, and God's weakness is stronger than human strength. Consider your own call, brothers and sisters. Not many of you were wise by human standards. Not many were powerful, not many were of noble birth. But God chose what is foolish in the world to shame the wise. God chose what is weak in the world to shame the strong. God chose what is low and despised in the world, things that are not to reduce to nothing things that are, so that no one might boast in the presence of God. He is the source of your life in Christ Jesus, who became for us wisdom of God, and righteousness, and sanctification, and redemption, in order that, as it is written, let the one who boasts, boast in the Lord. Here ends the first reading. Please stand if you are able for the reading of the gospel. The 
gospel reading is from the book of Matthew, chapter 5, verses 1 through 12, also known as the Sermon on the Mount or the Beatitudes. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up to the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you, when people revile and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil things against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For in the same way they are persecuted, they per, in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were, who were before you. This is the word of God, the word of life. Thanks be to God. Mission may be seated. Thank you, Chris. Well done. Just so you know, Chris did some homework before he read. He helped with that introduction today. We'll get you up here one of these days. This is good. So who are the blessed ones? Might be a question for us today. Who are the ones who are blessed? And Jesus uh, gives us a great example, but if we were to read all of our lessons today, the prophet Micah would say that the blessed ones are those who do justice, who love kindness, and who walk humbly with God. That's what Micah would say from our Old Testament. And as we fast forward a little bit, Paul from our 1 Corinthians text uh, says, who are the blessed ones? The blessed ones are those uh, who can find wisdom in the foolishness or the weakness, depending on your translation, of God or of the cross. You are the blessed ones if you can find strength in the weakness or the foolishness of the cross. And then lastly, Jesus shares with us who are the blessed ones. They are the poor in spirit. They are those who mourn. They are those who are the pure in heart. They are the ones who are the peacemakers, the merciful. Those who uh, hunger and thirst for righteousness, to be right with God in their lives, with that living of their lives. The persecuted and those who are insulted in the name of Jesus, doing the work or doing the ministry of the church, if you will, or of Christ, and people speaking falsely or speaking inaccurately of those and also tearing them down. The blessed ones are generally those that we're not really anticipating. Jesus is turning this all upside down as the crowds were coming up the mountain to be with Jesus and the disciples as Jesus is teaching and Jesus is in that teaching posture as he sits down and he shares this important message with them. He shares this this message of those who are to be blessed. There are nine that he identifies. Nine, and if you're into numerology in the Bible, uh, when you write literature, sometimes you do things for effect. So that is three times three. Three being the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit times three. That's an incredible number, number nine. And so there's really a great emphasis as we read this. Um, As people of today who read this Bible, we should be perking ourselves up. Not only is Jesus sitting down and up a mountain, but this literature now has nine blessings that are in it. And so it says to us, this is very, very important. In fact, this is the first thing that is recorded in Jesus' Sermon on the Mount that people believe took a number of days for it to be shared. And so we are to pay attention to the scripture today. And it comes on a very important day for us as we are to have our annual meeting and talk about how this congregation is blessed and how we bless 
others through our ministry, through our teaching, through our table guiding, through our ministry of help on Sunday mornings and volunteering out in our community and fixing homes and building ramps and doing all sorts of things that we do here at Christ the King and when we are sent into the world. So this is a very, very important lesson for us today. We find Jesus in this very special place. It is a little bit of an echoing, if you will, of Moses. Moses, we know, was the leader of the Israelites. Moses went up the mountain. And what did Moses receive on top of the mountain? Oh, very good. You are such smart Lutherans. I love it. Or is someone not a Lutheran in there here visiting today? <laughs> the Ten Commandments. Moses received the Ten Commandments. Moses received this important word from God in a way in which we are to live our lives. To live it upright or in righteousness. To live it in such a way that honors everyone. We are to follow those Ten Commandments. Jesus now is up the mountain and receiving this word from God that he is sharing with others of how to live your life. So here we have this kind of second uh, Mount Sinai uh, experience with Moses and now with Jesus, the Old Testament, the Old Covenant, and now the new one that is coming to life before our eyes here in the Gospel of Matthew this week, I was home for a couple of days, wasn't feeling so well, thankfully not COVID, but um, I needed to rest a couple of days, and so I got to watch uh, one of these videos that I've been wanting to watch for a while. It's not one of those blockbuster ones, but it's on Dietrich Bonhoeffer. It was a DVD that I've, I've had on my shelf. In fact, it was still in the cellophane. I think it's been in there for, I don't, I'd be embarrassed to tell you how many years. But I got to watch it today, and as I was watching it in the first 20 minutes, it talked about the Sermon on the Mount. Get out of here. A good German theologian, pastor, and martyr is going to share some words about the Sermon on the Mount. And I said, fantastic, this is my sermon being incarnate right before me. And I'm on the couch and I can just relax. But then I had to think about my sermon. So I started writing down what Bonhoeffer had to say about the Sermon on the Mount. When he wrote his doctoral thesis, You'd think it would be about the church, but really it was about being community. How do we live together? And he's known for one of his books, Life Together. What does it mean for us as Christians, as Christian Lutherans, to live together? And so he shares in his dissertation um, that it's not really about church necessarily, at least in his understanding, it was about the community that happens within church. So he's getting a little more specific for us. And from a Christian perspective, he shares, God intends for us to be in relationship with others. I hope none of you are confused about that or this is not shocking to you, but we are to be in relationship with one another. To be fully human, Jesus wants us to live as a new community, as a new humanity. Ooh, now Dietrich got a little deep there. He wants us to live through the waters of our baptism, to live in such a way that we live for God and we live for one another. Right? We get the whole cross idea here. He is sharing in her dis his dissertation of how we are to be with one another, and he says that these words that come to us in Matthew in the Sermon on the Mount are the words of how we are to live out our lives. To bless those who are the poor in spirit, to bless those who are mourning, to bless those who are persecuted, to bless those who are the peacemakers, to bless those who are the ones who ha are pure in heart. Sometimes we are those people, and sometimes we need to understand that there are others that we need to bless. Beatitudes, Latin for blessed. In case you were wondering, where do we get that? Blessed are the people. So we are to live our lives as a blessing to others, Dietrich shares with us, a great Lutheran theologian in our lives. So we live out these beatitudes. 
I'm going to do a spoiler alert here. So if you read some of Dietrich Bonhoeffer, he says there's no way that you can live out the Beatitudes. But spoiler alert, we're human, right? We fall short anyhow, right? And it is important for us when we do that to offer our words of sorrow and confession here in worship with one another before God. And so we know we're not perfect. We know that we will fall short, but we know that there is, if you will, this blueprint in how to live and love and bless others as Christians, as Lutheran Christians. Though another quote that I got from this DVD that I was watching on Bonhoeffer is from one of his former students, Inga. And she said, Dietrich was special as a, a professor at the university. He was special because he told us that when we read, we are to read the Bible as if God were speaking to me individually here and now. So what is God saying to you today? As Chris read our scripture, as we're taking it in in this time of worship, how is God speaking to you today in which to live as you are sent out into the world? I can't answer that for you. That's your question. That is your answer of how you will live as a blessed person to bless others in your life as we live out these Beatitudes, the Sermon on the Mount, when we are sent out today. So how do you encounter Jesus today? That might be another question that we can look at, and this is my third and final point because it is annual meeting day. We need to... <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Jesus is speaking to us about freedom, to be free in the gospel, and so we are to live uh, free in, in Jesus, and how do we encounter that Jesus in our lives today? That is another great question for us to answer. That is one I will be asking us in our annual meeting, so don't be scared. So if you can come up with an answer now, you have one for about 20 minutes from now. Jesus is calling us into a life through our baptisms to be lived out. And we encounter Jesus when we are helping and caring and sharing with one another. When we are sitting for understanding with one another. I was uh, part of a group Thursday evening, uh, a community group of leaders at the Boys and Girls Club, and we were talking about mental health, especially mental health in our young people. And as community leaders, we were talking about how we can care for one another and how we can share and understand each other. But it was really uh, amazing as we sat in our little circles and as we shared uh, about mental health, what we knew, what we'd experienced, what might be going on in our lives. Um, it was interesting how we made it accessible for everyone to share openly about how they were feeling and where mental health is for them. And there were a few people who were, who were there, two of which said, when you introduced yourself as a pastor... I got hackles on the back of my neck. Now, it wasn't because they felt really good about me. They said, my experience with church is not positive, and I don't trust you. Those words hurt. I like to think of myself as a kind, loving, trustworthy person who endeavors for everyone to know this great message of the gospel and how blessed everyone is through Jesus. And there were two people around that circle who shared, I belong to the LGBTQ community and my experience of church has been nothing but judgment and hatred and has been just horrible. And I'm not going to come back to a church again. We've got a lot of work, friends. There are people who have had experiences within these walls of the church who don't want to come back. So how do we meet people where they are at? 
How do we teach and share with them that this world is upside down and you might have encountered some people who are not getting how we are blessed and how we bless one another. I left that meeting not feeling very well, but I knew after I left that we have a message that I can share with others, and that is of love and acceptance and of blessedness. That's what ministry is about. That's where I'm at. And I believe that's where the ministry is, is to share with one another, is how do we show the blessedness of Jesus Christ? This new covenant that receives and blesses everyone else. I'll end with this quote here. Abraham Heschel, a great Jewish um, follower and faithful person who has written a number of books and is just profound in their own right, shares this. Just to be, to have life, to be in existence is a blessing. You all are a blessing. But to live, to live out your blessing, to live out the Beatitudes today, that, my friends, is holy. And as I tell my seventh graders when we talk about the word holy, what does that mean when we say holy baptism, holy communion, holy Bible, holy ghost, holy spirit? Something that is holy is set apart for the work of God. God's work, our hands. You, my friends, each and every one of you are blessed and are holy. And you have something very special to share with this world when you are sent today. May we do that together in that love of Christ as he's up the mountain before the crowds telling them how they are blessed and how to live their lives in such a way that the kingdom of God becomes present and Christ's love or God's love comes to life. Amen. We take a moment to catch our breaths and then to sing, Rise Up, O Saints of God. And as you are able, let us stand and sing. Together we share our faith through the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. 
He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Oh, we're not quite there yet. But let's share some peace and we'll come back to the prayer song. We're going to do the prayers next, Ralph, so I'm glad that you're ready to go. Um, we'll sing our prayer song one time through. We'll offer our prayers, and then we'll sing our prayer song a second time. As you're able, you can stand for this. Together to follow Jesus, we pray for the church, for the world, for all who are in need of prayer. Gracious God, we ask that you cultivate humility in your church. In gatherings of every size, teach us to boast only in the cross. Shape your church to be the people of kindness and generosity, of justice and many other blessings that we have heard in our Sermon on the Mount. Today, as we gather for our annual meeting, help us to celebrate that ministry, but also to continue to boast in your cross. For all of the ministry we have shared in the last year, you have made available for us in which to minister. And help us to lean into your blessed assurance that in this new year of ministry, that we trust and follow you in those directions in which you guide and lead. Gracious God, the foundations of the earth bear witness to your faithfulness. The mountains and hills echo your holiness. And when we mistreat your creation, show us the error of our ways. Inspire us with reverent awe to honor all that you have made. Gracious God, you make the foolish the wisdom of the world. Raise up honorable leaders to seek justice, to love mercy and pursue peace. Frustrate plans that are corrupt, wicked, and self-seeking. We give thanks for the peacemakers who reconcile the world to your love. Gracious God, as with your people Israel, remind this congregation of your saving acts and how you gather us to be a community of your joy. Remind us how your faithfulness brought us through difficulties and sustained us despite our weaknesses. Establish the cross as the center of our life together. Thank you for the saints who come and have gone before us and for our prayers that we now offer aloud or in the silence of our hearts at this time.
Gracious God, hear now these prayers as we bring them to you, trusting in your wisdom and power revealed in Christ crucified. May we say amen, amen. Be seated as we continue with the morning offering, and the choir has an anthem to share with you along with our saxophone player.
Thank you, choir, for your sharing. And uh, we have one more piece to share with you, and I'm going to invite Jim Wires to come forward to share about, um, well, his message today. <laughs> the upgrades that we need to make on a building of this age. Uh, myself, uh, Pastor Judy, Jason Dean, uh, Dane Duvall, and Keith Heller are on the team. The original building uh, extending down to the offices was 1986. This uh, section, the worship area, the fellowship hall, kitchen, and classrooms are 1996. So we're getting to a point where some of this stuff is starting to age out a little bit. We have been struggling with a roof leak. Um, you can kind of see where the roof, the soffit flattens out, there's some loose drywall tape that we finally got fixed last April. Security had two people up at the steeple for a day and a half and they fixed it for us, which was fantastic. The three air handling units are the furnaces, right? Um, there's one out here for the worship area. There's one, there's two on the, far, on the north side of the building for the fellowship and classrooms. Those are all 1996 vintage. The contractor we have servicing them tells us that they're having a hard time getting parts for those and they're starting to get obsolete. So we're getting prices on some of these things. The roof, the air handler, uh, change out carpeting. Um, um, the sign out front, and we had torn out the shrubbery on the front of the building because it was all dead uh, two falls ago. So we're getting prices on all of, all of those things. Um, that information will be turned over to the council sometime around April 1st, and in their wisdom, they will figure out the best way to make that happen. Um, I can say that the young man, uh, who am I kidding, you're all young, uh, that I talked to about the air handler uh, said that he's had equipment like that uh, with a 26 week lead time. So it's not like if a furnace goes out in your house and you can call and say, I need a new furnace. This has to be built and shipped and all of that. So um, I think it's a, it's a good idea that we started thinking about this stuff. Um, two additional I areas that we identified as immediate needs. One is the and strangely enough, the garbage disposal in the kitchen, uh, 26 years old, sat unused for two years because of COVID, which is absolutely poison for them. We, uh, and it rusted tight, so we got it broken loose. Um, if I started up now, you'd be able to hear it in here. So it's, it's in pretty, pretty bad shape. So we did order a new one that's sitting outside the door. You can touch it on the way out if you want to. We'll <laughs> <laughs> Did I say it was $1,600 for that? I mean, it's, it's a big commercial three-phase thing. So, it's, so we've got people lined up to re install it this week. We've got some free plumbing and a free electrician lined up to do that. The, the other area, and this is more problematic, is the parking lot lighting. Um, if you've been here at night at all, you know it's kind of like a twilight zone out there. And it's kind of scary actually so and we've probably ignored that long enough so we got pricing from a contractor on, on upgrading uh, changing things a little bit adding some fixtures and in my opinion it's a really good price and he can get it done before uh, Ash Wednesday if we can get that going right now now Aubrey was able to find enough loose change within our budget I, ministry spending plan pardon me um, to pay for the garbage disposal, but we're $1,800 short for the lights. Now, my team has nothing to do with this next part, but I think we should try to raise the money for that today. Um, we've had two families that have offered uh, a total of $300 toward that, so we need $1,500, and if we can get that done, we'll actually have lights in the parking lot. So. Uh, if you can help with that, and I, I'm not asking that you divert your normal giving to that, that is necessary to keep the place running, but if you can offer some help with that uh, and we can get that taken care of, that would be just an awesome thing. As always, if you have any questions about any of this, um, 
you could write them on the back of a hundred dollar bill and bring it to me <laughs> and I'd be happy to talk to you about it so thank you Thank you, Jim, and our building renewal team. If I'm reading between the lines, we should maybe pass this around again. <laughs> we give thanks uh, for the ministry of you and many others, and uh, we, yep. <laughs> and we like, go ahead. Excellent. Yeah, we'll, we'll fill, fill it up before you install the compactor, is that right? As you're able, let us stand and share uh, our thanks for the offerings that we bring forward now and the ones that we receive. Together we share, liberating God, you break the bonds of injustice and let the oppressed go free. Receive these offerings in thanksgiving for all your works of merciful power and shape us as people of your justice and freedom. You and me. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread he gave thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and he gave it for all to drink saying, this cup is a new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. So before we eat and before we drink, we remember the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples to pray and continues to teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Congregation may be seated. A few words about Holy Communion today as you come forward. You may receive a communion by intinction. As you receive the host, you may then dip it into the uh, grape juice and consume the elements at that time. If you have a gluten intolerance, we do have gluten-free wafers that are found in the center of the dish. Just let your communion server know. And if you are not able to come forward but would like communion in your seat, please let one of the ushers know and then they will instruct the communion servers to come where you are and share communion with you. This table is the Lord's table. It's not the pastor's table. It's not Christ the King's table. It is the Lord's table. And it is a table that is meant for all. And we truly mean that as we welcome all of you to come forward and receive this body and blood or to receive a blessing in which we are united in our time of worship and through Jesus. Come at the direction of the ushers. I invite the communion assistants to come forward at this time.
Receive now the blessing. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. May we say amen. Amen. Let us stand and sing our sending song. Oh, Master, let me walk with you. Let's do, uh, let's do one verse today. We'll do the first one. One it is. And we share in the benediction, and here at Christ the King, we reach across the aisle and join the hands of those to our right and left to show our oneness and unity in Christ. I know, for some of you, that's a long walk. That's great. It's good to see it. This is community working together. God bless you and keep you. Jesus, grant you grace and truth. And the Spirit, send peace upon your hearts now and forever. Amen. Go in peace, bring God's love to life. Thanks be to God.